Hey guys, what's up? Lone Berserker here, and this is a commentary live battle, a Colchis versus Rome matchup. So you've seen me use this build before. I've got three horse archers, four hillmen, three slingers, five Colchian nobles, three noble blood calf, and two axemen. And for some reason, there it is, my middle mouse button wasn't working. So Rome has three Syrian archers, I think four legionary cohorts, three Sakiai Equites, two Vilates, uh, four Avocati, and three Vigiles. So immediately here, I have uh, quite the task ahead of me. So I'm just going to start off here. I'm not usually, I don't really usually care about what I shoot at, but in this situation, I kind of had to. And you can see, I'm going to stay probably longer than I should. I actually almost get caught there. Just gonna shoot them as much as I possibly can, and I've already killed five Evocati. Well, six now, but you get the idea. So that's pretty good. Um, basically, the plan is just to shoot as many of these guys as I can. I am occasionally hitting the Vigiles, which isn't that big of a deal. I didn't want to, but I kind of just shoot whatever I want to shoot. Um, although, a lot of people don't agree with that strategy. <laughs> so... I thought this Roman build was kind of interesting as it wasn't- I do actually get caught here by the way, I think. I lose like a few horse archers. Um, I thought this Roman build was interesting because it wasn't like your normal just heavy infantry spam. It actually included skirmishers and cavalry so like I said usually that's not the case so I thought I was just gonna get obliterated by uh like 10 Evocati. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> The person I'm playing up against is a lot more honorable than uh, sword spamming. So, I actually was really, something that I was really caught off guard by was the fact that he added Vilates into his army. Um, I think it's really cool because it gives Rome, <clears throat> like, another tool that it could use on the battlefield and literally nobody uses it because Roman players are one-minded type players. <laughs> I will stand by that argument forever, by the way. Unless they're like a uh, competitive player who actually has strategies in his mind, but uh, like this one in front of me. So, I don't know why it's lagged there, by the way. So again, I'm just shooting his Evocati. I'm actually dodging a lot of his arrows, which I thought was pretty funny. I'm just making him waste a bunch of his arrows here. And so, uh, my horse archers are basically sacrificial. All I'm trying to do is shoot the... Uh, flanks of his Evocati, which as you can tell I did a good job over there on those two units, so I'm going to try and do the same thing over here. He is going to form uh, loose, what is that even called, loose formation? I know it was called loose formation in Rome Total War, and every unit had it, but <laughs> they changed it. <clears throat> I'm not having as much luck over here, I'm not, uh, he actually, that would have been a good volley if I stayed still, but, so. You can see I'm just running around him, shooting him, that's what happens here for a while actually before we engage. I wanted to kill as many as I could before we did engage, but I also wanted to try to use my uh, foot skirmishers to get kills too. So I go up here on him, and I am just basically shooting him as much as I possibly can. I'm aiming for his infantry, I'm not aiming for his skirmishers. And now he tries to get aggressive here and catch me off guard with this cab, which, which can happen, it's a pretty good strategy. Um, I think I eventually start targeting, yeah, I, which I shouldn't have. Um, I should have just stayed on his infantry. I'm going to run away here when he brings his three Vigiles up. And I am going to start getting some pretty good kills on those Saki Equites. So that was nice, but um, I don't want to engage yet, and I don't want to really fight these three random hillmen here. So I'm just using my horse archers now to basically screw around with this cavalry. Killing his calf wasn't important to me, but I kind of was all right with it because if getting them off the field would be nice i decide to actually <coughs> sorry my throat is still tickling me um i decide to move forward here i'm gonna target his skirmishers he does shoot this hillman i think he was focus firing it actually which in this case it is actually a good idea okay excuse me okay i can speak now so i do lose one horse archer but at this point, I think he was almost out of ammo. I didn't actually think he'd catch me. I don't know how he caught me. I think I got stuck on those trees, which it was actually kind of funny. 
He's gonna come up here with his Vegeta Lays, and I didn't want to waste- I didn't want to give him the opportunity to shoot my Koki and Nobles. I would have rather lost a Noble Blood Cav than a Koki and Noble, so... I am gonna charge here, and I do take quite a bit of damage, but I am gonna shoot his Evocatis again. And these Evocatis have taken a lot of casualties. So you can see, though, he's gonna wisely target my Noble Blood Cav, and I'm gonna be kind of greedy here, and charge two of his units at the same time, and I am gonna take some casualties here. Still kind of aiming for the Auxiliary Serial Archers. Don't really know if that's... If that was the wise thing to do, um, I'm so I I've killed a few, but like when it really comes down to it, my skirmishers should be targeting his infantry because that's what I need them to do. So at this point, by the way, both my horse archers are out of ammo, so that third one was definitely close to being out of ammo. So it wasn't a huge loss. It was annoying though because I wanted to be able to use him for stuff like this. I actually am not oh, I'm not uh, unhappy about that. If he wants to waste his javelins on me, then that's fine. Because that's basically what I'm going to do with my horse archers, is just annoy him. If they engage- they, I'm basically saying I'm fine with suiciding them into his army, which I'm about to do here in a minute. So I'm just going to basically screw around with them. He does get another javelin volley there on the hillman. He wants to clear him out of the way, which is smart. He needs to, uh, getting rid of the uh, hillman is actually a good strategy. Because, um, that basically denies me my, uh, meat shield line. For, and for the Koki and Nobles, that is important. Because the Koki and Nobles need to get their charge and not get charged. But I guess against Roman infantry it's not that big of a deal, but I would still prefer picking a fight with the Hillmen uh, in there first. So I'm going to try and go after the Skirmishers here, but I don't know why, I kind of just ran into him. So I'm basically just trying to get those Auxiliary Syrians. So he's enraging me, I don't know why I wasn't firing, I do start there. I think I had my guys off fire at will and I forgot. If, if you don't know, I basically just leave my units on fire at will 90% of the time and just let them shoot what they want. So I am going to lose a slinger here. I'm going to try and hit that legionary cohort as much as possible. And then I'm like, basically I, at this point, I knew I needed to kind of just go forward and attack him. Not the strategic thing to do. I should have circled him and went that way and tried and try, tried to make him fight an engagement more on my terms. And now he's going to target the noble blood cab, which was smart. I didn't move it. Don't ask why, because I don't know either. I wanted to try to go for a little uh, cheeky javelin volley on his Syrian archers here. I thought it would have been funny if I could get one off, but he is going to intercept me, and I'm kind of just going to let it happen. Now he's moving his cabs to the flank. This completely caught me off guard, actually. Now I'm going to run away from that legionary and throw my Koki Noble in, so he's going to take a lot of extra casualties, and you can see the Koki Noble is just going to start tearing it up. Same thing, I'm going to block him there. I actually ran away here because I didn't want to fight two units at the same time with the support of those Vilates. Now over there, I've got a hill horse archer pinning them down <clears throat> with the help of a hillman. And then I'm going to throw my general in. I'm going to move another Koki Noble over. I'm still targeting that legionary. I have another Koki in going. This one, about he this one here is bracing for the, for the fight against the Evocati. Um, this legionary is getting its butt kicked right now. So, I'm basically gearing up my Cav to fight his Cav. I'm gonna sacrifice this, uh, what is this, a Hillman here? Even though I just got Javelin Volley there. This, uh, Legionary is about to die, actually. I'm trying to get my Axemen through this gap in the battlefield to help out with that fight. Now, actually, let's, let's, uh, look at this, because I made a huge mistake here, and now I'm realizing it. I didn't even see it on the main battlefield. So, we're about to fight over there, and instead of sending my Axemen through this gap, and hitting him on the flank, which is what I was going to do by just taking the long way around. I basically waste this unit by just traveling twice as much of the time that I could have when I could have just went one way. And I do have a cav unit that's going to come over here and get both those uh, archers off the field. So now we have a fight over here, which is completely not in my favor. Noble blood cav kind of suck. I don't know why they get so much praise. I don't see it. I don't see it in their performance. I guess maybe it's just the way I'm using them. But even against the Roman Cav here, I'm going to get obliterated. Which I was kind of surprised by, honestly. I thought I could hold him. Although, I will say, he does get a nice rear charge on me with this third Equise. And I've got my Axemen coming over. I'm about to double team this Evocati with the Koki and Noble. I knew one of them weren't, wasn't going to be enough on his own. And he's going to get some good shots on me there as I turn my back on him. So, look at how many guys he kills there. That was a lot. The Koki and Nobles in the center are going to do a pretty good job. This one might struggle, but this, gonna, this one's going to win pretty handily. And you can see it's basically the Koki and Nobles are going to be carrying this army 90% of the time. And now I'm going to aggressively go after this Vilates because I knew what he wanted to do and that was shoot my general. It's a smart strategy. Um, it would absolutely be crushing for my morale. So I can't allow that to happen. You can see I actually catch him pretty quickly there. And I'm going to try and get this unit, my cav unit here, which does get javelined. 
Um, these field rotations do a very good job, actually, about clearing my last cab unit since I was just microing too much over here. You can see I'm trying to help with the VLT, and I actually do get my cavalry out of that fight because I wanted to try and save some. And I leave the axemen there to deal with them, which they will do an alright job. He does strategically shoot them, though, with those Syrians. Um, I thought the Syrians would have been out of ammo by now, but they're not. I do get a charge on the VLT. Now, I do decide to make a uh, bit of a... I don't know what you'd call it. You might call it a mistake. I wanted to do it just to quickly get these infantry units off the field. I charge my axemen into the rear of this legionary Nevakadi, and they, immediately the legionary is wavering. I get my cab into his archers, but it's not going to do that much because he's just going to shoot me. And he's going to kill the cab unit. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious doing stuff like that. So I leave the axemen alone to deal with the Evacati because I was pretty positive they could deal with them, deal with it themselves. You're going to see that's not going to happen. So I do end up doing a lot of excess damage on these units and basically saving my general and this other Koki noble who had to fight against four Roman infantry units. And then I broke through the center there, and you can, you're going to see I'm going to try and chase after the Syrian archers, but now they are basically out of ammunition, because he's currently going to melee with me. Double teaming that um, Evacati there, and I am shooting that archer there, but at this point, like I said, it's basically pointless. I'm just going to use what's left of my slingers now to uh, shoot at his cav, which isn't going to do a lot of damage. And now his general's coming around. I send the axeman to go deal with those uh, Violetes, and he does a pretty good job at that, but he does also shoot me in the flank and kills a lot of them. So I wasn't, in the end, able to save my general, and now he's just losing decisively over there with that other Colchian unit. So basically, I'm down to almost all my infantry, which is still pretty sturdy infantry, and I'm very happy with their job. Now, he does rear charge me, but I don't think he understands how quickly these guys kill Cav. So his uh, Equite starts taking a lot of casualties there. So I've got these three Saki e uh, <laughs> these three Colchian nobles there. I have an Axeman over there, an Axeman there, and then I've got those two Kokia Nobles, which aren't doing the greatest. However, my Axeman came back, or not came back, but, well, came back from killing his, um, Violetes, and he's just gonna get in this fight as quickly as possible. Won't really do a whole lot, especially since my opponent notices it, and, uh, takes a unit out to fight him. So that was pretty smart there. So, it's really just kind of a melee stalemate here across the battlefield, although he does start rear-charging my general with his general. The uh, Roman general is interesting. I don't understand why they only allowed you to have the pick of the general and bodyguard or the legatus. I think it's kind of dumb because there obviously were Roman generals who fought on the ground. So, uh, But this is basically the end of my infantry over here. I've got the three Kokian nobles in the center and that one axeman. I'll speed it up now since it's just kind of boring. I lose my general there, so my morale... I don't know if Kokian... Are these... um. Are these disciplined? Oh, they are. Never mind. So my general dying doesn't matter. At least on these guys. They're disciplined. The Axemen. Oh, the Axemen are too. I did not know that. I actually didn't know any of the Colchian units were disciplined. That's actually really nice to know, because now my general doesn't matter as much, and I'll probably be more reckless with him when I play Colchis. That's basically uh, my uh, one tip for you. So, my Kokia nobles are going in for a valiant charge here. Now, they will fare pretty good one-on-one -on -one in a fight against an Evocati or a Legionary. And I will actually win at first, but once the cavalry comes in, it's over. Although, I was kind of confident about turning around and just annihilating his cavalry. But that does not happen at all. My units get absolutely destroyed. Look at this. Well, they're not right now, but the other units are. That one's down to 13. This one's down to 43. So, in, in most cases, I actually do kill a lot of Cav, though, still. Um, in most cases, the Colchian Nobles will obliterate Cavalry in a fight, but um, in this one, my guys were just too tired and um, too low in terms of numbers, so he does also kill my Axeman with his General. So, uh, that was the end there. For that fight, my opponent fought uh, very well. So, um, my Colchian Nobles were basically the only units who did good on the battlefield. Uh, my general did pretty well in the end. These two, though, 68 and 80 kills aren't the greatest. However, 155 and 172 on Roman infantry and cavalry is pretty good. Horse archers, extremely disappointed with them. I thought they did way better than this. I don't really know what happened. I mean, I saw them get kills. I saw them shooting Evocati in the flank, but maybe I should have used heavy shot. I was actually thinking about it, but I didn't because I didn't want to get too close to his infantry, and I had to deal with those archers his foot archers anyway, so it probably wouldn't have worked out. 
Then we got the uh, Noble Blood Cavalry. Uh, just, again, I don't see where the hype is for this unit. It's not that good. The only reason I use it is because I don't want to buy Hippeus Lancers. Then we have uh, Slingers, I guess, getting okay kills. The majority of these, though, I think we're on Vigiles. Uh, excuse the grinding noise in the back. That is my dog chewing on a bone. The Axemen did pretty well, actually. One got 82 kills, one got 79 with the Chevron. And a lot of those kills were on Evacati, so I guess they were good. And then two of the Hillmen killed some Vigiles, so I guess that's good. Uh, Rome's General and Calvary did really good, actually. Jeez, I'm crow. Um, his Archers did pretty good, too. Militaries did alright. Those are good kills, especially considering most were on... The majority I saw were on Noble Blood Calf and Axemen. So those are pretty good kills. Then, um, Evacati doing good, obviously. Legionary is doing pretty good too, and obviously just Vigile is doing very crappy because that's what Vigile is do. I think Rome, if anything, they lack a good meat shield. Well, actually, no, you have Hastati, which are just overpowered as crap, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Whatever you would in uh, the Roman roster is overpowered. Thank you guys for watching this battle. Um, I probably will have another one soon coming out, so uh, I guess be ready for that. And, uh,. Merry Christmas, because that's coming soon, so I'm going to start saying it at the end of every bit video, and you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> Goodbye, guys.